Welcome everyone to the start of dabbling in another new hobby. This time something dealing with a few more of the domestic duty details, and that is sewing and upholstery. I taught myself how to use a standard sewing machine during the tail end of the COVID lockdowns, where some try to learn because they need to repair or tailor a treasured piece of clothing, or because they want to work from patterns, I differed in that I really just wanted to reupholster my vehicle interior, specifically that of the plane. Will the quality be the same as professional? Absolutely not. But when I quoted lead times and costs, I found I could do it wrong four or five times for the same cost, and I was looking at at least six months before I could even get into a shop. So let's look at my first trial piece, which is recovering this armrest. I plan to reuse the base plate and foam, so I'm working to remove just the existing cover, but I don't want to leave it in a state that makes it unusable to pattern from. While I could say this is delicate work, I'm really just ripping apart something that was on the verge of coming apart on its own anyway. Now once liberated, I'm able to look over the condition of the foam, and it's really tempting to remove and redo the foam just to add another skill, but the foam is actually in pretty good condition, so it's just going to get recovered this time. Now we're going to use the old cover as a pattern against the new material. So let's pull that over and then pause for a moment to talk about this texture. This all started out as a flat piece of leather and I stitched it for the pattern. This was another thing I had to work with getting some of the cost out to justify doing. But if I'm going to do a once in my ownership upgrade, I want to make it as nice as I can. And so while these patterns can be purchased, I wanted to better match the stitch length of my machine, perhaps even inadvertently making dimensions that are a little different than everyone else, even if I'm the only one who notices. And besides all that, what's the point of listing out my hobbies if I'm not always expanding that list? So pattern making gets a little discussion here. Let's step back over to SolidWorks and take a closer look at how I did this. I started out the model with a base plate size which I know can fit my printer, and then dimension out a pattern that fits my stitch size and my taste. Go ahead and repeat the pattern, add a label before slicing it all up and taking it over to the 3D printer. From here, I just need to give the printer about an hour to whip up the pattern that I can bring over to my test material. And we are going to be doing this on test material instead of using up the more expensive leather. Now we can just lay the pattern over the material and use a washable ink to mark out the lines where I want the stitching to be. This task is either tedious or therapeutic, depending on your mood and proclivities, but before too long, we can move on to adding the backer. The backer is what's going to give the pattern depth. Just need to dab a little contact adhesive to hold the two pieces together until the stitches take over that load, and then we can move on to the sewing machine. Now, at the machine is where I had the most to learn. I started this journey on an older, not quite vintage, but an older home machine. Then I tried to upgrade to a newer Singer HD machine, and that one, no matter how much time I spent on the phone with tech support, it would not stitch straight. So I took the plunge and stepped up another level to a sale rate machine. This one allows me to get all the way up to 6mm stitch lengths, and that's already nearly double that of the Singer, and it can stitch straight. So I'm glad I practiced on some scrap material and got a feel for what I really need to do to get the results I desire. And what I need to do is really focus on starting the line several stitches before the required resulting material, and at the same spot in the pattern each time. Then I just leverage the slow stitching ability of the machine and count out the stitches. Having selected a 6mm stitch length here, it's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, bury that needle, lift the foot and turn, lower the foot, 1, 2, 3, 4, bury that needle again, and repeat. After a few practice pieces, I developed a feel for how much assistance to give in feeding the material for consistent lengths, and it's just a lot of repeating, then cleaning the ink off with some water and moving on. Now back over at the original piece, you might start to see where I'm headed with my idea. But first, it's time to use the existing material to mark up the pattern for reference. I turn it inside out and label each piece, one for the top, two for the bottom, and add some marks in between the top, bottom, and the middle band so that when I line things up later on, uh, it'll all come together. And we'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. I also took a few measurements and notes just in case things go completely haywire and I don't have this material to fall back on because very shortly this will be torn into pieces and I will have less to fall back on anyway. As promised, here's a better look at the alignment marks. I've cut out the new pieces and transferred all of the original marks to the corresponding new pieces, and I also found that it helps to have a good origin mark. 
I used a double line and put it at the least visible seam in the finished installation. With all the pieces marked out, it's back over to the machine. And this ramps up my need to learn yet again. Getting stitches started is pretty easy. Start with the marks lined up and get going. Folding the seams the way I want them to look ramps up the intensity even more. But what it really comes down to as the most difficult for me is turning the corner. In full disclosure, I actually tried this several times with different approaches to get this looking somewhat okay. The first one I tried individual bands, that was a terrible idea. The next one I failed to keep the marks lined up and I fell short when it came down to the final seam. Then I had one that felt pretty good, but found out it didn't have the proper seam allowance and ended up being really oversized and loose on the foam. So even though I've edited this for a continual assembly, know that it took a few attempts, several cuss words, uh, but a lot of good feedback and learnings. In the end, this is the penultimate offering and is done on some spare material. Because this is going into an airplane, I needed the final set of materials to undergo flame resistance testing. At the time I put this video together, I was waiting for the results. I have since received passing results and will be going even deeper into this project now, but for the purposes of this video, I'm using the spare material to show the intended final product. And after getting the top plate stitched to the banding, I wanted to show the rough fit, because it's just a matter of repeating on the bottom plate before we test fit the final product. And so here we are with the finished product, which is not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to turn out, um, but still has room for improvement. There's still some weirdness in the corners, uh, but here we are getting ready to reinstall it. This is the console that it's going to go on, and it's going to screw into here uh, and kind of hang over. So I think for now, these, uh, these rough corners are uh, in a good enough shape to hold me over until I get the new fire tested material uh, and I did just get word this morning that I passed the uh, the flame resistance test so it's material that I can use and we're going to be ordering some of that and getting started on that um, in the relatively near future but for now let's go ahead and get this installed and see what it looks like and so here we are with the the new cover installed um, the magnet currently is missing on the inside so we'll have to fix that um, but this is kind of what I'm going for. This is what exists today, um, which is fine, uh, but it is starting to wear through. You can see kind of on the, the back of the seat here, there's some spots that it's kind of wearing through. Um, and it's just, it's a 20 year old, 20, 18 year old plane, um, 18 year old interior. So we're, we're just kind of due for recovering some of this stuff and go from kind of this dated beige to something a little bit more stylish and uh, seeing what we can do to make that happen. Um, eventually we'll get through and probably try to look at doing some of the rest of these interior panels and maybe get the headliner taken care of as well. Um, but figuring the seats will be a good start and with those out I'll be able to look at uh, what's actually covering some of these panels. Um, and we'll see what we can do along the way. Um, we might look at refinishing some of this wood, uh, possibly even just kind of sanding it down um, and doing what we can to, to just liven that up a little bit. Uh, luckily, this is the type of work that an owner can do on his own recognizance on a plane and doesn't require a whole lot of oversight outside of making sure the materials are compliant. So that's what we're going to do with this and stick around and see how the rest of it goes when we get the, uh, the real leather.